Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. On the other side of the law, a former Metro Detroit police officer is facing charges for stealing money that was supposed to help his colleagues. And a snowstorm delays President Biden's trip to the Pfizer plant in Michigan, and that same storm is impacting the effort to get Americans vaccinated. And so we begin with Storm Tracker 4 as more snow is set to hit Metro Detroit today. In fact, we've already seen some snowflakes falling. Now, we won't see as much as we did earlier this week, so a little bit of good news there, but it's just adding to the mounds of snow that are already on the ground, on the sidewalks, on the curbs. Let's get right on over to meteorologist Brandon Rowe. He has a look at what we can expect. Just a pretty coating. So the snow we got the other day, any of the shoveling or dirt that's on top of that pretty snow will cover that today. That's about it, but still a nuisance snow. If you have plans to be out and about, it'll slow you down. It'll create some slick conditions. 21 Detroit, 21 Ann Arbor. It's 23 Port Huron and Monroe. A little northeast wind keeps those wind chills in the teens, uh, but we do have that snow coming down replay of the last few hours where we get some holes or some dry spots in the radar up northern Oakland, southern Lapeer counties. Elsewhere, it's pretty light stuff, tiny flakes, and it's going to take a while to stack up an inch, maybe a little bit more through the afternoon and evening. This will keep going on and off through the afternoon and evening. But again, just over an inch in some spots, probably as much as we expect today, Evrod. Slow it down. We do have another storm in the seven day forecast. So as you're heading out, make sure you've got the local forecasters app. It has that interactive radar so you can check out what's happening where you're going. We've got discussions, personalized videos, everything you need to know your best tool in any weather storm. The local forecasters app free under WDIV. Evrod, I'm coming back with a weekend storm. All right, very useful resource. Brandon, thank you. We'll see you in just a little bit. New here at noon, a former Hazel Park detective goes before a judge and he's accused of stealing money that was meant to help his fellow officers. His name is Sean Boucher. He's accused of embezzling more than $65,000 in public asset forfeiture funds. He's facing several felony charges. Our Victor Williams is following the case for us, joining us live now with more of what happened in court just a little while ago, Victor. Yes, good afternoon, Avrod. It took a while for this case to get this far. The FBI had been investigating this officer for quite some time, and the evidence that they found suggests that there was a clear breach of public trust, and they're also saying that he took resources that were meant for his colleagues, like money from the officer training fund. Former Hazel Park Detective Sean Belcher sent before a judge at the Oakland County 43rd District Court, arraigned on several major charges surrounding embezzlement during his time on the force. Belcher is accused of stealing from the city of Hazel Park, charged with seven counts of conducting a criminal enterprise, embezzlement between $50,000 and $100,000, and five smaller counts of embezzlement by a public official more than $50. When on the subject of bond, both the prosecution and defense clearly made their argument and in consideration that he's turned himself in that um, he does have as we understand it though we've not heard from the defendant ties to the community the people believe it's fair proportional and reasonable to set a fifty thousand dollar personal recognizance bond. mr voucher has been present and available and i've been working with the agents involved in this case since the outset of the case three years ago we haven't gone anywhere, haven't created any trouble. That being the case, he's not a flight risk, he's not a dangerous society. We're here willfully. We've always been always been available and readily to appear in court. I believe that personal bond is appropriate. And Belcher was given a $50,000 bond. The only catch is that he has to give over his passport and he can't leave the state of Michigan. Reporting live in Hazel Park, Victor Williams, Local 4. All right, Victor, thank you for the update there. Now to Troy, where we're getting our first look at the man who's charged in a deadly stabbing there. Jerome Perry Bay, who's seen there on the bottom left corner of your screen. 
He's charged with the murder of 38-year-old Carlos Contreras from Flint. Prosecutors say that the men were arguing in the parking lot of the Bell Tire on Rochester Road, again in Troy. This was just this past Sunday night. And they also say that Bay pulled out a knife and stabbed Contreras in the chest, and his body was found by employees the next morning. The judge denied bond. Right now, we want to get you updated on your coronavirus headlines. President Biden postponed his trip to the Pfizer plant in West Michigan. It was originally scheduled for today, and he was scheduled to tour the Portage plant, but he had to cancel because of the weather. He'll now stop there tomorrow, making his first visit to the state ever since he was elected. New numbers out today show unemployment claims jumped in the last week. The number of Americans applying for first-time benefits rose to 861,000. This morning, Oakland County announced it has given 99% of its COVID vaccines, more than 41,000. County Executive Dave Coulter says that they are working to expand partners to give out more shots, but they say that they need more doses. Meanwhile, the storm that delayed President Biden's trip to West Michigan is also delaying coronavirus vaccine shipments. Tracy Potts has that and the new spending to fight the virus. The Biden administration is still pushing for that big COVID relief package, but while they're waiting for action on that, they've announced new spending to expand testing to schools for students and for communities that in some cases have been overlooked. The White House plans to spend $1.6 billion on more COVID tests and supplies while waiting for Congress to approve massive relief. Federal government has to chip in make sure we get this done. Storms affecting 30 states are delaying vaccine shipments. We're going to run out. Today, tomorrow, we're going to run out of what we have now. The U.S. is now vaccinating 1.7 million people every day. But the CDC warns cases are dropping because we're coming off the holiday surge, not because more people are getting shots. And that new strains of coronavirus could push those numbers back up. And the continued spread of variants that are more transmissible could je jeopardize the progress we have made in the last month if, our, if we let our guard down. Instead of spring, the Biden administration now says due to production delays, it'll be July before the vaccine is available to every American. Next month marks one year since the country shut down. The CDC predicts 559,000 deaths by then. The White House is now planning how President Biden will mark that anniversary, perhaps with a speech or maybe an event. I'm Tracy Potts. Tracy, thank you. Today, the Biden administration will be unveiling a major immigration overhaul, and it offers an eight-year pathway to citizenship for an estimated 11 million people living here in the U.S. without legal status. It includes an increase in visas, funding to process asylum applications, and new technology at the southern border. It does not include enhanced security there, a priority for Republicans. Life expectancy in the U.S. fell by an entire year in the first half of 2020 as coronavirus swept through the country. The CDC says overall life expectancy for Americans was 77.8 years. That's down from 78.8 years in 2019, and it's the lowest level since 2006. The data shows minorities were hit the hardest by this. Black Americans lost nearly three years in life expectancy, and Hispanics almost two years. The head of the NAACP, Derek Johnson, says today's data proves that systemic racism can no longer be denied. We're working on more reaction to this story, so make sure you join us for Local 4 News at 5 o'clock. We'll have much more on that. A semi-truck got uh, wedged underneath a bridge on I-94 and backed up traffic during the morning rush. This happened around 7 this morning on the eastbound side of the freeway right near Linwood. State police say that the driver misjudged the height of his trailer and got stuck. Traffic was able to get by in the left lane, and the tow truck driver did get out, was able to get that truck out. Well, it is day four with no power, no heat, no water for so many people in Texas. And with many taking drastic measures to stay warm, there might be no end in sight. We'll tell you what the state is doing to try and bring this nightmare to an end. And our coverage of the winter weather hitting the United States continues in Nashville, where people were trapped overnight when a dock collapsed. We'll have more on the rescue effort there next.